There's oh, near, he's... oh yeah. You want to talk about that one? Yeah. So this is actually a really good setup uh, from Glad. It's a good series because they do this push. They force London to back off from the high noon and just LOS it. London thinks they get good value, but mirror sets up. All right, chap. So we are taking a look at the Overwatch Steel Series Invitational. Uh, Los Angeles Gladiators versus the London Spitfire. So this was two weeks ago now, 28th. So not that mm -hmm. far ago. Um, but this isn't going to be the same patch that Overwatch League starts on, right? We it's It has changed a little bit. Do you know kind of off offhand what is the uh, what are the changes that have been made? Uh, on this patch? Or are you talking about like... So what's the difference going to be between the meta that we're going to look at and the what's going to be the meta for the very start of the Overwatch League? Uh, I mean, I'm not sure. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. But it is going to be different in some small way. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah. Let's just get into it. I, just feel I intentionally that his... didn't like... Uh, you, you can play it and I'll just kind of talk over strength it. as a uh, tank for a second is here. to... I intentionally didn't like hardcore analyze uh, this for the sake of you know being able to do it on stream. Yeah. Um, when when it was on, I think I just had it off off on off to the side, uh, you know, while I was doing stuff and watching it. So um, one of the interesting things about this one uh, is remember this is pre Overwatch League tournament. So um, whatever happens here, it's kind of like first preview. It's one where everyone uh, you know really over analyzes how these teams perform and. You know, uh, make jumps to conclusions right away on who's the best team and who's doing well. You know, uh, which is always fun to do. Uh, you know, now that I'm on this side, you know, where I'm not active, where I'm not coaching a team this season, I'm going to enjoy being in that seat now. Uh, <laughs> and you get to criticize everyone. And yeah, this is going to be fantastic. <laughs> so one of the things is that for today's stream one of the things that i was like really adamant about is that lou and arrow not prepare for this because uh one of the things that i wanted to kind of like take a look at you know because today is a little bit experimental uh i know that it might seem like it's all very official and we're doing shiny things and this is like i don't know this is this is kind of like us still experimenting and seeing how this is going to work so i wanted to kind of like see how this sort of content would work without doing a large amount of prep and just kind of like watching it and, and seeing it for the first time uh, with with chat. So that is kind of like one thing is that uh, we don't have prepared notes for you. We're going to take a look at it, uh, whereas that's probably a lot different than usual. And this could fail miserably. Who knows? Uh, but we're just experimenting with format. So if you do have feedback about kind of different ways that uh, we could do the, to make this better, let us know. One of the things that I would like to try uh, is I want to kind of take some time between the maps to bring people on voice comms with us and like ask questions. Uh, but yeah, so just uh, just bear with us. We're we're just in a little bit of a experimental testing phase to see what kind of format works best. We did it with the individual coaching. We did it with the pugs earlier today, and now we're also going to do it with the 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 pro coaching. So Checks. it still blows my mind that Moth is on Paris Eternal now. It is like. It's good glad, yeah, gladiators. I think the production crew had oh, a still, nice little like, bumble just here. Seeing them on any team other than the San Francisco Shock just yeah. hurts. It hurts my brain. It's crazy. A shoe, shoe moth backline. I think I think they were teammates way long ago in a, on Boston Uprising Academy. Ancient history. Like way long ago. Yeah, but it's cool to see them playing together again. Also, what and, uh, uh, crazy backline? What iteration of the London Spitfire roster is this? <laughs> hmm. Is it four? Five? Does it fit on one hand? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think it's something like that. Yeah. They have they have changed full rosters like, quite a few times this time. But yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll I'll let you take lead on this. I'll I'll control the the video, but uh, you let me know where you want to take this and pause and all that. So, okay, yeah. Um, well, let's actually pause real fast. Um, so, a first thing is two different comp styles. So this is something I like to see personally as a, as a viewer rather than just being mirror all the time. Um, we have the uh, Balzaria compared to the uh, Ryan Diva Rush comp. Uh, so that's, um, you know, going to be something interesting because the Gladiators team is going to be, it's very much about uh, setting up their supports before the fight. Um, whereas uh, London, their comp is going to be, you know, if they get on top of the supports, then they basically win. Uh, 
So Gladiator has to get as much value before London gets to, uh, you know, gets to the back line. So uh, that's going to be what I'm looking for whenever we whenever we play this. And what kind of value is LAG looking for here when you say like looking for value? Yeah, so that's going to be um, largely on Mirror is is like a big one. How much value can he get uh, without getting poked out by Shax, which is hard to do. It's Shax. The guy's insane. Um, and then, uh, you know, Tracer as well. So they, you kind of want to create like a surround um, on them as they come in, multiple angles, make them have to choose a side to block. And then, uh, you know, try to get as much damage, as much ult charge um, before uh, Moth and Shu get, get ran over. So um, one of the other ways that London could do, um, and I'm, I actually don't know because I haven't watched this, is they could try to um, like take a safe spot on point and then rush after point gets capped um, because it's cough. So, uh, you know, there's a couple options that they have here. So uh, like London could be using inside the gazebo and then Paris is going to be like stashing their back line yeah, primarily in here. Like, you know, you're saying that Chu and Moth, uh, they, like them being sped onto with London's rush is London's win condition. Uh, mm -hmm. Where would you kind of position LAG's backline in order to make them safe if they did play on point? Um, well, the most ideal situation is getting onto high ground. Um, but if you don't know what the enemy is running, uh, you know, it's really hard to get on high ground um, if the enemy, other team has a Lucio. Um, so being on the side where they're going now, where it's like uh, near the cars, uh, that mega out there, is this is probably the best option. Um, because now you have have the option of being able to choose both main sides, both teams, wh what, you know, it's main for both teams, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to create that surround. Um, and then they can uh, kite back through, you know, through the doorways back to their main, or they can kite back in towards the cards if they want to get a little risque. Um, but yeah, it, without being able to get high ground, this is this is like the best option that they have right here. I think this hero... You can play pretty much everything. So, so one other hero that can <laughs> yeah. transform into basically everything. And of course, so they're going to do as well on the tracer. a rotate. Yeah, we'll see. I want to see where London is set up. With yeah, see, London is just chasing him. And I rotate around, dance around the point. But I Echo is also good at just taking this high ground away. And this stage in particular is really important to take high Oh, ground. yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. A little bit too high. Just took one too many yeah, shots for, uh, for from Shax. And then... Off, uh, finish him off. The follow up and then, yeah. yeah. Moth gets pinned. A harmony orb on space means that Diva isn't taking it down too quickly and she finishes off the kill. So, yeah, we, we see the support uh, swap. Let's see. Does he. Paris is it just a mercy swap? The gladiators on the, in the top left there. We'll get that changed momentarily. The gladiators do end up on the cap. Yeah, so he's going to go just for damage right, boosting. We'll so, this is one of, one of the this. iterations that they could do uh, here. May, the um, it's swapping it's to Mercy means that your your other support is uh, just safer because you're in the air. Uh, you're not, you know, limited to the ground. So, it's a little bit of a back and forth here, which is pretty good. They don't get the freeze under the ball. So all that time they spent killing the ball, they get shacks, which is huge. And they don't have a lamp now. So this is like a big window for Galads to, uh, to push off the Spitfire more on the defensive and space ends up getting run down. The what their contest perfectly is just running at people, freezing them, or not freezing them, but just killing them instantly. There's the beat as well. Can I get more pixels? More of the pixels. <laughs> Give me more pixels! I have to go for this re-engage, trying to deal with Mira, or at this point, just kind of ignoring him. River does end up falling, however, to Mira. Yeah, so Mira's getting a uh, well. ton of value here. Kind of so th this is the thing that's always frustrating versus Ryan comps or any kind of, um, you know, clump comp, is that when you get picks, it takes forever to flip the point. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably his... About six or seven kill of the game. So fifty six percent. If they flip it, nuts. they need. They only need like two fights. Gonna have a response to this. Lads is gonna swap to Anna. Batiste, but they're making big so shoe on to the right Anna, and that's for the Sombra, for the defense primarily, or what's the what's the logic behind switching on to the Anna there? Yeah, well, I think um, he was already in spawn, and London swapped to Monkey Sombra. So uh, against Anna, just has a better time. Outside of like transcendence, um, Anna just has a better time against that comp. So. A little bit, a little bit more tools. Is uh, Brig not strong enough in this current meta? 
I, I would think that uh, you know Ana's a little uh, less less susceptible than the Zenyatta, uh, but Briggs not getting enough value here. Um, I don't think. I mean, I think Brig would be a fine choice. Um, this is probably just because it's Shu, and his Zen and Ana are so incredibly good. I'm I'm curious if teams are playing Brig Mercy. I don't know if it's enough, um, like offensive pressure. Mm -hmm. Dives onto the high ground again. This was actually a really good peel back from Glad's um, when they did the dive. Uh, they make one of the things about high ground is you don't just want to drop off you want to make them have to use resources if, if you're going to be dropping off i think glad's know like this isn't something that they're going to want to like soak the dive and just tank it up top they don't have like a big defensive um to do it they want to have to make them take the time to jump up to the high ground they peel back and they have to either wait for resources or london has to wait for resources to push again um and then you can counter it with your grav or um, you know your echo alter or whatever because space is going to be looking for that opportunity uh, when matrix when uh, Molfig's matrix is down so when they do this initial jump uh, onto the high ground they're going to peel back and then when london has to go again that's your opportunity for mines for grab whatever it's already at 76 percent so uh, if they win this fight it's probably means the first point uh, it goes over to Glad, so this is a really good position, a really good peel back for them because they peel back all together. One of the key things about this comp and is that with Zarya, in any of these comps where it's like Ball Zarya, Monkey Zarya, these kind of things, where you don't have a Lucio with your Zarya and you don't have a Ryan with your Zarya, is your Zarya Anna have to be like this super tight knit like pairing, understanding where they have to kite back to because if they split it's gonna be really hard mm -hmm. um your zarya is can be such a huge yeah. factor for keeping your sports alive a but b it's like a huge presence uh, on the point so them kiting back to main together is super important this is this is really good uh for their kite back just it, just you know in in terms of like uh you know somebody looking at this as an off tank player is space looking specifically mm -hmm. to uh, you know, always use this projected bubble defensively on Shu, or you know, is it more of a reactionary usage here? Is there any point in time where space is going to be bubbling Muse, for example, uh, or is this bubble in this situation with Shu and space having to play so close together, uh, and space himself even being pretty vulnerable without a lot of support? Is like, is this kind of pairing where they stick together like a glue, or is this more of a bubble just out of circumstance? Yeah. So this is um, w when you're Zarya in this comp. Your bubble is pretty much only for um, when you're in a defensive position, like they they have control of high ground. This is where space is bubbling Shu when they're forcing a soft dive, because without a bubble, um, Shu might die. I mean, may, you know, it's if he's really greedy, he could save it. Um, but otherwise, in any other situation where you have bubble and your Anna's not in danger, um, you're bubbling your uh, wrecking ball for whenever he does his engage. Um, but against this comp, since they swapped off Ryan May McCree, the bubble on the Wrecking Ball isn't nearly as like important as it is, uh, you know, versus that comp. So, um, and then the third one is if one of the DPS is making like a big play, now your bubble is for um, probably for Mir, whoever he duplicates. Um, but since they're on a dive version, it's probably going to be used for Anna. Since they're already set up on high ground, they're, they're taking this first dive. They drop down. He has the bubble for Anna, so, so uh, she doesn't die. One uh, one quick question from chat before we keep going. Uh, so if London wanted to focus the Anna, would they be forced to spend resources to get bubble out and then jump the Anna? Or is that just a bad move to make? Um, if forced... No, that's fine. Um, what you could do... Um, right here, what a lot of teams will do in this kind of situation is they'll send their tanks up and uh, set their DPS for catching the drop. So um, right here, let's say if if Shax is behind right here, boom, you see that? Um, this is like if Space misses his bubble or he bubbles early, Shu's dead right here because Shax is right here catching the drop. See that? Like that that's a really key part. And Shax is also going to be forced off because Shu landed the nade. So yeah, so like this is just this right here is uh, individual prowess from Space and Shu um, being able to kite back, um, and then once he recalls, now you have like you know a good five seconds before you have to do it again, which you want to try to do that while the bubble's on cooldown. So this is where um, you, 
like to think of Overwatch as like a um, a back and forth that's turn based almost. Yeah. You know, so gladiators just took their turn, forced them off the high ground, forced a couple of resources. And so London had to use their turn to counteract Glad's turn. And now it's going back uh, to Glad's turn. So since London is on the like on the reactive, this is where, um, you know, or yeah, Glad's is on the reactive. Sorry. <clears throat> now they, they have the time to let point tick up as long as possible. Like they don't have to make an aggressive move, especially since London already is on the point. You can do an aggressive move if you want to like push up early and try to deny them space on the point before the fight ever happens. Um, that's something that Shock is always really, really good at in general. Um, like whenever if you watch Shock in other games. Um, so here, um, it'll be interesting to see what Glad's does off of London's next move now that London has to reset and do another one. So here, both teams are preparing for that uh, second set of cooldowns. Ooh, Mirror actually Ooh. drops though. They get Res out, so that's big. So that that right there is is like the fact that Mirror gets picked right there is your instant time to go. So they they didn't have all their cooldowns, but they had their jumps. So Mirror gets picked, and they just have to jump off of it. This is best case scenario for London because the only thing they used was Moira ult. And so now they basically have five volts and more ult charges so fast that, you know, you're probably going to get it mid fight anyway. Mm -hmm. So now this is like, this is the key fight in Koth where it's going to be, it's last fight, you have five volts versus four ults. You know, this is now, now we have to think about the uh, EMP here. So pause it real fast. Um, so first thing, Moth swaps to Brig. And so this is almost in, like entirely Moth's, you know, saying, okay, this is last fight. In order for, for EMP to get shut down, I can play Brig and look for a stun. Um, and so if you look at this positioning, uh, the, the route that they take, um, they're trying to make sure that Blase's EMP is as hard as humanly possible. Like they want to make his life so hard for this EMP. So they go into small corridors to where... If Blase is going to EMP, he's probably going to be close enough to someone where they're going to see him. And so that gives Moth enough time to react. So as for Brig players watching this, if you know the enemy has EMP, this is a good swap uh, for Moth here, last fight territory, you can look for a stun. You play around positions where you can um, just spam your whip to break him out and then have an opportunity uh, to look for a bash. Um, and so keep an eye on where their supports are set up for this EMP. And I, actually, in this frame, Space is going for a really early grab. Uh, so I'm really uh, interested to see like where that is, if he's just trying to get a pick. If you got, maybe it's uh, Hottie and Kellex, maybe. Well, we'll see. But um, key positioning here from Moth against uh, Blase, really important. Is Shu going to stay here and try and like stay split from his team so that, like, uh, you know, Blase is going to like, decloak on Shu uh, and could get armor packed from Moth uh, or like choose, uh, you know, to force Blase to EMP the team and then Shu can just nade them all. Or, or is Shu going to kind of move with the team here, do you think? I think Shu will move with the team. Um, he probably just stopped to scope in and shoot. Um, it, it is an option for him to stay split. It's definitely not like a bad thing. Um, what That's something that a lot of people do is kind of bait the EMP onto one person, especially when you have... Uh, if your brig doesn't get hit by EMP, the armor pack is such a fast burst heal um, that if if the tracer isn't there right away, then um, you know you can probably save him. Um, but I think he's going to move with the team just kind of based on this positioning. Like he's probably going to go inside with them, um, especially because the grav has already come out. Uh, but he shows himself, so he, he doesn't want to just walk face first into the into the Sombra. So Blaza actually EMP'd that and didn't get any value from it. So that's like one of those situations where either Blaza didn't realize that ever, that the grab was coming out. It's like you know within a second of of each other happening. Yeah. Was the Space's aggression there based off of like you know seeing an opportunity for it or trying to up the tempo to make sure that Blaza couldn't set up for that? Uh, EMP, like he yeah, I think, like... yeah, I think it's a tempo play because when you're EMPing, uh, you know, if if the other team goes first, 
uh, you know, your EMP is not going to get as much value. So I think that was a, a really good uh, tempo play from space there. Poor Hattie. <laughs> The oh, are they going to turn this around? Because I think Mir's in trouble as well, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, he gets oh, he, he, he had gets to do get off. It's big. And this was the, the only reason this fight is even as close as it is right now, because London Spitfire did have so many of those ults, right? Yeah. Yep. And so was, that was like a really good tempo play from space to kind of deny that they get to flip, and then it's just chaos at this point. Who can frag better? A beat comes out just in time to save Shax's life. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, he got moth. Wait, he got moth. He got moth. <laughs> Mirror's going to... Oh, wow. Man, the the amount... I feel like Mirror has been perpetually 2 HP. Oh, is he going to get the Moira? <laughs> that fades out. He's done. He's done. Oh, he got... Yep. yep. yep he got it. Yep. He's gladiators. Looking like a bit of a scrappy team. Yeah. They're cleaning the tanks off the point as well. Like These situations are where good tracer players thrive. Uh, chaos. Chaos. Just murder everything. Yeah, nice. Kevster's insane. Yeah, Kevster and Shaxx are both insane. Goes. You can have 100 to 100 fights for, for minutes and minutes mm -hmm. on end. Both these teams look right. pretty good. Mm -hmm. there. He got a couple of support yeah, I think in in uh, this series in general, you know, one of the big things that people were looking at here was, you know, I mean, you just look at Gladiator's roster. They should be a good team this season when I mean, you have some some crazy names in here. Um, it's, you know, how well does Muse uh, mesh? How well does everybody mesh, you know? Um, and then London uh, is kind of a, a wild card because I think that they they can do really well, um, but you know it's kind of a question mark. It can be like that, so. you know it almost feels like one of those uh, old school like European teams that just uh, you know they don't have any kind of huge like, tier one superstar players, but uh, you know in the same way that Euros dominated the goats meta, there's that's probably, it feels to me like a squad that's really gonna just be really quite cohesive, good teamwork, and yeah, wild card is a good way to put it. Yep. Okay. All right. So, um, going into this one, <clears throat> so this map is definitely one uh, people uh, in Overwatch League will generally prefer Ryan comps if you can. Um, Ryan comps or rush comps, um, and so this is a good part to kind of talk about the idea of marking, uh, because the concept of marking a an enemy is basically the idea of. Uh, denying them the ability to do something so I, I don't i hesitate to call it preventing them from doing something uh, but it's it's kind of similar where you basically just want to make them get as little value from uh, their kit and their positioning as possible so doompus is one of those characters where if if you mark him and prevent him from setting up he gets uh, very little value this is something that you'll see a lot with um tracer duels is if one team is giving their tracer like orb a lot and the trace one tracer has an advantage over the other one the one that's at a disadvantage isn't going to like go for go for like the heavy 1v1 kill or like the super dive yeah you know on back line they're just going to try to take the other tracer's attention for yeah. as long as possible they're, they're going to try and match the tracer one to one so that neither yeah. of them get value but more specifically the harmony orb from the enemy tracer is not getting value and that means their harmony orb, if they are matching with the Zen, is getting some value in a fight that actually is trying to be engaged or forced. Right. Yep. And so this is uh, something that you'll see against Doomfists all the time. So any moment that uh, Mulfig can shoot the Doomfist, or Ripa can shoot the Doomfist, or May can right-click the Doomfist, um, they should be doing it, and they'll probably do it. I mean, you can already see Mirror had to spend time creeping and crawling just to get to this position. You can look at the ult charge. He's already, you know, three times less than all of his teammates because he's been hiding just trying to get any kind of setup. Um, and so uh, one of the big things is space is on Zarya compared to Mulfix Diva. Um, and so when if Mirror does get in position, then, then Glads wants to push you know they want to go in the moment the mirror has any kind of window to do anything i mean they have the bubbles to do that because you get such, such you know so much value in such a short time with bubbles um so london has to um get a really good wall walling off the rhine um ideally or the zarya and then mark the doom as much as possible so yeah so he uh he gets his setup he didn't get fully marked so he's able to uh take out 
you know, one shot that one shot that sim. So they they pushed off of that window where when their Doomfist was set up. This is good. In this kind of situation, I'd like to see um, London put a little more emphasis on clearing out Doomfist spots, whether that's moving together as a team or um, you know sending Molfig uh, together with like Ripa or something. So long as you're not in uh, LOS of uh, Denny McCree, so the wall. Yeah, wall cut out, split the team, and actually got rid of the. Uh, uh, Window as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it didn't matter. It didn't matter. <laughs> All right, so Glads has Grav and High Noon. I, they're setting up, you can kind of see Glads setting up uh, early because they want to, yeah, push out with this. That's good. That's kind of dangerous against a May, though. Again, in that kind of choke. Yeah. They're using them so defensively. Oh, here. Oh, yeah. You want to talk about that one? Yeah. So this is actually a really good setup uh, from Glad. It's a good series because they do this push. They force London to back off from the high noon and just LOS it. London thinks they get good value, but Mirror sets up. So they the idea that of marking him. Yeah. Yeah, so, so the marking doesn't happen. Mirror is set up, and now they can push aggressive. They know the May wall's not up, and they can uh, kind of go off Mirror's positioning. So, so that, really that's good. actually a really interesting one to play, because they went for the really aggressive speed boost on the high noon, so Kevster can swagger out and force them to back off. <laughs> and then with that, London Spitfire's losing their visibility, oh, and they're losing track of where Los Angeles Gladiators players are, and Mirror uses that opportunity to get into this position. He's not marked, and now when they push forward... Los Angeles Gladiators used that last play, which supposedly failed, and the London Spitfire thinks they got value out of it, but they've actually fallen into a trap and Gladiators about to execute because you'll see the bubble from space go right onto him. Yeah, in, in these in these kind of comps, High Noon isn't going to get much value anyway. You know, it's, it's unlikely that you're going to get any kills from it. Just using that to reposition it, like a High yeah. Noon speed boost combo specifically to get your Doomfist into a more effective position. That's pretty cool to see. Yeah, it's, so it's pretty key. Blase and Ripa tried to win that fight with uh, Blizzard and, and Window. And so with them not winning the fight and Glad's only using the High Noon, like, and, and uh, you know, Shatter from the past couple fights, that's, that's, this is really good for Glad. This is like a super solid position. Space doesn't even have to grab. Okay. Oh. Oh, here's the combo. But space dies, so that's big. Um, Kellogg's had to beat. So Moth can now beat aggressive when they see a window. Yeah. Now that their beats up, that's big. So that's one of the one of the kind of catch twenty twos with uh, defensive ults. Is if you have an ult that the enemy team has to uh, use their defensive to counter. So grab space sees an opportunity to grab. Kellex has to beat, and then uh, now that's one of the that's a turn turn based thing, right? Mm -hmm. So space uses the grab, uh, the other team beats, and then now Moth is free to use his beat and push aggressive. Um, and so especially in a fight where it's last fight scenario for the map, you know you can use that beat to push super aggressive. They have to touch, they have to be on the point, they have to brawl you, and you have a huge shield. So uh, that was a that was really really good um, management from Glads on on that map. He's getting punched. And that was uh, that was two zero, right? Yeah. So awesome. Mm -hmm. So that was good. Perfect stuff. All right. Um, so I wanted to see again in in the on the topic of being experimental. I suppose if you are on the Pico Discord, you'll see a, a waiting room uh, channel. I suppose. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask Arrow uh, or myself, I suppose, although he's the smarter one in this call. <laughs> um, Go ahead and drop into waiting room. I will drag you in uh, if you'd like to ask a question uh, about what you're what you're seeing so far. So, all right, we got uh, Chased Nave joining us. How are you doing, Chased? How's it going? Hi. Uh, so I had a question basically. Um, so basically, they switched to Doom as far as I understand because they want something to catch up after ATP. Like one team stayed on Symmetra, and the other team. Uh, they switch to Doom to also like catch up with ATP. Is there other heroes you can maybe actually get value off as well? Like maybe a Sombra or something, or I don't know. Could you play something else other than Doom? Maybe Echo for the spam, or I don't know. 
just in place of Doomfist, what you can play in that comp. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that kind of DPS slot, um, even though he's the one using TP, the TP is more to get your Ryan in position more than anything else, even if your DPS lags behind. I mean, if there's a DPS player that, you know, uh, is, uh, you know, just really proficient at a certain hero, you can play anything there, even if they're a little behind. Um, but in that comp, usually um, you would see, uh, you know, um, a May or a, let's see, what was it? Doomfist McCree. So May or Reaper or um, Echo, anything like that, Tracer even. Uh, you know, the, the Smudge TP is mostly just to get tanks in position because you don't want, you, you can have your your Rhine, you know, kind of be there to hold shield and anything, you know, they're, they're not going to be able to break that shield by the time your DPS gets there. Um, so, you know, really it's just going to play whatever you want the comp to be. Don't think of it as much as a, as a speed thing. Um, and just more about whatever you you know you want your comp to be. So May McCree um, is fine. Um, it's is on especially on that map that one in particular with it being uh, so choke heavy. May becomes really popular like that map or like a control center. Uh, May is going to you know have a ton of value in Ryan comps if they if you know if they're going to play Ryan, and then May is always going to be really good for for separation purposes. Um, I think Glad's did uh, Doomfist because Mirror is such a good Doomfist player. Um, and because he does have the speed, like if you if you are you, if you do have a DPS that has movement abilities, then you make them you do the same TP. Um, but um, you know, Doomfist against walls in, in it like another in a choke heavy map like that, Doomfist also uh, thrives. So uh, I would recommend doing a May. Um, it's probably the best choice in that kind of comp style. Um, but it's really just kind of team preference. For the tank, is Diva that much better than basically Zara and everything because you can jump on top of wall, I guess? Or like it, I know Sigma is like probably way too weak. Uh but Zarya can also play carry if he gets a lot of charge. Yeah, yeah. So if you're gonna play Zarya, if you so Diva is generally more um for marking um and kind of taking separate angles, being able to clear side angles faster than Zarya can. Um Zarya is for getting it's for two purposes. Number one, getting a lot of value in a short burst window. So like using your bubble with the Doomfist. So a Doomfist can engage with bubble is like is really key. And then you also have Zarya for just the high damage if you're if that Zarya player is able to maintain their energy. Plus you're able to have an offensive ult with Grav. Uh, and then you know, but if you're playing Diva with that comp with the Doomfist, that probably wouldn't work well because any sort sort of CC stops Doomfist in its tracks. So just right, kind of yeah. preference. Thanks, Chase. Yeah, thank you. All right, let's do one person. Sora, how you doing? Yeah, what's up, man? What uh, what's 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 on your mind? What you got for a question? Uh, so first of all, Errol. Hi, nice to meet you. Hey, hey. Um, so mostly my question is trying to understand how quickly positioning changes in this high level of uh, gameplay, and I noticed that a lot of the just second to second decisions made the teams constantly be switching from inside the room, high ground. Um, so I was wondering if you could explain that a little. Uh, with high ground, are you talking about the first map or the second? Uh, the second map. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, it really just kind of depends on one of, one of the key things that uh, teams are going to decide in their ult dragon decision making. There's that like, you know, maybe five to 10 second window where you're calling ults. What ults do we have? What ults do they have? And that kind of determines, all right, where are we going to fight? So what ult do we have? Where are we going to fight? Is always a high priority in deciding that. So that is going to change all the time with how the fight's, how the fight's flowing. When you have the time where you want to push forward into them, surprise them, if you have a wall or a corner to use where you can hide, make them come closer, then you can push into them. When you have a comp like a, a Doom Zarya comp where you know, like I was talking about how your window of opportunity is very small, but you have a huge impact in that time, then you want to make sure that uh, you have as little travel distance as possible. That's why you see um, them hiding behind the wall close to point. As soon as uh, London's out in the open, they're going to speed out of there and try to make the, the travel time as little, as short as possible, bubble, doom fist, and then that's like their, their bread and butter for this comp. And when you don't have those abilities, if... London's able to soak that dive, and then they're on the aggressive. Now Glasney needs to uh, either choose 
A, continue the brawl in the same spot, which usually will happen if they have like a key ult for like a follow-up, you know, um, just like they did the high noon into the Doomfist play. Um, or they have to back off and then set a new fight spot. And so sometimes that's going to be cutting back into the room. Sometimes it's going to be cutting back into high ground. That's a one of the split second decisions that uh, they have to make as a team. Um, where you know in Overwatch you have a million decisions happening at one time, and so one of the key markers of a really good team is being able to stay coordinated on a kite back and push in um, in those kind of scenarios. I mean, those are the marks of like really really good teams is being able to do that very coordinated and clean in the middle of chaos, um, and so. Um, that's kind of you know where the fight is happening is always a major major factor uh, for a shot caller to have to consider at all times. And Moth is one of the best for sure. Oh wow! Well, thanks for explaining, man. Thanks, sir. Yeah, no problem. All right. Well, let's uh, we'll grab another one, uh, another question after the next map. But uh, let's jump ahead to it. What map was next? Looks like it's Blizzard World next. Nice. What Blizzard World is. Uh, I have mixed feelings about Blizzard World as a map. Same. Yeah. I like it, but I also hate it. It uh, depends on the meta for me. <laughs> Some metas on this map are really fun. Others are just the, the absolute worst. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Glad's opted to defend first. I'm curious if this was this is a preset map pool or if it's like a loser picks map. I actually don't know uh, what the rule set was, but um, generally it's loser would pick map, winner would pick the side. And so if that's the case, Glad's picking to defend is an interesting choice. I think I always, I generally prefer to pick defense um, because um, you, know, you kind of have an idea of what you have to do on attack uh, mm -hmm. to win. Um, and if, if you were to full hold, then the enemy, uh, you know, having to only defend one point, it's like super demoralizing. Um, so yeah, but Glad's is opting for the mercy anna with echo sombra and the zarya being here instead of diva is interesting as well um against looks like london's going to open with a rush and i don't know if they'll change they probably won't change because against sombra you want to play fast um so if they when they realize it's sombra they probably just want to rush in blase is probably going to switch to kree after the tp yeah uh, probably mccree um he could do doomfist but it's probably mccree um, so this is the same concept as uh, City Center on Oasis, where Glad's going to have to set up, um, take take angles, get as much value from uh, the Echo as possible, um, and then uh, you know try to make sure that Shu doesn't die, uh, Shu and Space don't die before um, they get that value. So wherever Shu sets up is going to be something we have to pay close attention to. Um, and then um, the fact that they have Bird Ring in now instead of Mirror, means Kefster is going to be playing any projectile hero. Um, so Bird Ring on Sombra means if they get a hack, then Kefster should have a lot of damage output. Hack into Nade, into, into uh, Sticky Bombs is a pretty big combo. So, But also kind of reinvented himself. There were a lot of questions about Bird Ring after a season. So let's one see if we can spot London's where Shu is set up. Has found a great new home with Los Angeles. Uh, nice, this is good. Early, this is good. Um, so I want to point that out. Can you pause real fast? Bird Ring farming ult on Sombra as early as humanly possible is what you have to do as Sombra. If you're just if you're playing Sombra and just setting up and waiting, looking for a hack, uh, you're doing it wrong. You should be uh, trying to farm as much as possible. Set your translocator up so that you can, um, you know, take it, put it back down, and immediately go back uh, to looking for a farm. So this is really good. This is about as early as possible. That was really good. London does swap to uh, the dive, the Sombra Tracer dive variation. So um, it'll be uh, a little similar. This is this is a the Tracer Sombra with Moira is kind of um, considered almost like a catch-all dive comp um, because you can play decent against almost anything. Um, there's always going to be win conditions here. You have fast tempo with Moira. You have the burst damage from a dive. You have the EMP for a big play. Um, you know, so it's kind of one of those catch-alls where if you don't have a specific comp that you want to run, uh, this one kind of works against almost anything you'll see. Uh, this is why a lot of teams will open this or like use this in early maps uh, until they get an idea of what the enemy team's going to play and how they want to counter it. So, pretty good. Uh, so if I did TP forwards to try and, um, an easy twenty percent ult charge for Bird Ring. Yep. 
we do end up going. Oh, did we see? Did we see through the wall whether where she was? Uh, it looks like he's. I think, that, that, I think that's wait, him. No. Yeah. No, to the, to the wait. That's you right yeah. there. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's, so he's that means they are. Yeah. So they're playing far back, which is good. That means if if London dives him, there's no point pressure happening. Probably. Again, not too much. Lazi is going to be looking. Did right. you rotate Scouting onto the high ground? Really he may have. Either way, high ground or back arches is fine. Uh, if you're playing high ground, you probably kite back to arches. Wait, so they're playing? Are they playing up? Do they just push up? You see space drop on the on the right side, or left side in this kind of. Do you see yeah, him drop down? Yeah. There? So I think they're like full rotate because I think that Shu has already dropped and put his back into the mega room. I think that yeah, he so did like a okay. full uh, rotate. Yeah, so that's an option where if you want to right? kite Cause, back and cause play Because Shu's back the in there. So he started at Arches, yeah. saw this, went to the high ground, and then him and Space dropped and put their back line into the Mega. Yeah. So this probably is because when they realize it's Sombra, Bird Ring hacks that Mega, and now they play off of that. So he basically, Shu basically has a second life bar if he gets dove in there. Oh, oh well. <laughs> Doesn't matter if he's got two Still health bars if both of them disappear. Yeah, so but they both lost uh, Flex Support and Space is off. done. And the tank, so yeah, space is done. I get the guys on monkey, but oh, good. Okay. Kestra, okay. okay, okay, okay. All right. I think Moth is done. Moth is oh. Oh. He lived. Oh, jeez. Moth and Kevster, man. Oh wait, was that a? <laughs> <laughs> don't show, oh no! Don't show Smito. Oh no! Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. Oh, <laughs> uh, outskilled. Outskilled. Yeah. Okay. okay. So. So you you had thoughts. Okay. So. Bird ring and. I wonder who who calls this? Who calls for the EMP for the. Because if they was EMP ZMB, get killed right? yeah. and push, yeah. So I'm wondering if it's like space or bird ring. It's probably a bird ring seeing that their monkey's overextended and wants to push off of it. I, th I think they wanted to, like, it looked like he used it specifically to clear uh, uh, Hottie's bubble, right? Yeah, well, because Hottie, Hottie just used all of his cooldowns. And so you, you uh, EMP this to clear the bubble and anyone else there and you can burn yeah, down. between shoe, bird ring, and space, they should be able to burn Hottie really quickly here. Right? Mm -hmm. So they if, they do. If, yeah, if they get the kill here and space lives, then they could re, uh, recontest uh, with Echo Wolf when he gets there. And you have enough time to be able to take back point. But Yeah, so I think the big one is that Blase actually was on the flank and put enough damage in. So yeah. it, it would have worked if Blase wasn't there to do the finishing blow on Shu. Yeah. yeah. And they also did have enough damage to kill Space there? Oh. Mm -hmm. I didn't think they did, but... Yeah. Space took a, a ton of damage from something there. Now, are they going to switch off uh, Sombra here or keep it with Gladiators? I don't think... Like, unless they're going Tracer, Bird Ring stays, right? Yeah, Tracer... It, it, with Monkey Echo, I think they say Sombra Tracer, you probably don't want to swap to McCree or something. So it is quite a big loss to have used that EMP and not gotten value from it. Mm -hmm. So Moth goes to Brig, uh, which is, uh, I think, is a good choice here. Oh, early, early EMP, and they get the tanks. So I don't know where Blase was set up, but if you have an option to EMP when they're not ready and your team's ready to follow up, then that's really good EMP. So uh, good EMP push from them. Um, and now they have to look for next fight. So next fight is going to happen... Um, on this map, you have to think no one's going to be holding high ground, like pre-set up on high ground for the next fight, um, as long as London keeps them off of it, which they actually don't. So their monkey's able to pre-set up. See how, how slow they are to rotate up? And now uh, Glads is able to push off of it, and they have to use cooldowns to be able to take it back. So I'm back and forth here of ults. So the... Yeah, nice execute. Kevster's Echo is very nice. Space mm -hmm. is just, you don't want to be playing Diva in space. Nice heals, though. Uh, Birdring dies somewhere. Did he get, did he get a hack? Can you check real fast? I could check, but, uh... And look, no, it looks like he just died. You don't want to be playing Diva in space. 
Yeah. Nice heals though. I mean, you just drops. He's in trouble. <laughs> he just runs a ripper, ripper dies. He's like, oh, okay. So yeah, losing ripper there. Yeah. Losing ripper there basically just means now they have to reset fully. So what I would have liked to have seen from London was them pre-set up on the high ground, don't let them in at all, and you go early with, with whatever ult you want to. Like I, I, I think they used uh, Coalescence and Primal, so I would like to see them go earlier whenever uh, Glad's is about to take the high ground. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're a little slow. So with Shax here, against like the, uh, you know, what is Shaq's big kind of job here as Tracer? Um, I mean, the biggest thing since since they're on Brig now, um, he's gonna he's gonna want to put less focus on the back line. I mean, unless he is just like big ego, you know, I'm gonna shit on them. He probably is gonna avoid the Brig, yeah, um, and try to farm tanks as much as possible. Um, any attention, even though it's not the best situation uh, for Tracer, if you farm tanks, then the supports have to look at the tanks, and so it's at least something. Uh, he probably isn't going to get an execute, but um, you know it's something that you can do. One of the other options with Hadi swapping to Rhine now, um, he's going to want to be uh, set up to where wherever their Rhine and Diva are pushing, he's going to want to take the other angle, whatever the other angle looks like. And so Hadi pushes, he gets a stick. Um, when you have pulse bomb, that's a, a time where you can look for um, a pick on the back line. Because a lot of times you can still you can pulse, and uh, there's certain spots in the brig shield where like pulse is still going to do damage to the brig, and and one of the things that kind of sucks about brig shield is if you if you shield the pulse and you drop your shield, the pulse will will fall and stick to brig's feet, and so unlike Ryan's shield, um, Ryan can can block the pulse, drop the shield, and drops to the ground. With brig, it's not as simple. Um, so you still can pulse Briggs as Tracer, um, but he basically just wants to be set up for wherever the Rhine is going to be pushing. He wants to take whatever other angle it is. And so there's that. And then secondly, if Mulfig can't mark the Sombra, then Tracer needs to shoot the Sombra because uh, Sombra is going to be doing two things. Number one, he's going to be either spamming to generate ult charge, which in this case he probably will spam to get EMP, uh, or if he's looking for hacks mid-fight, Shooting him while he's hacking puts it on cooldown. So that's like another um, alternative. Now, in general, if your team is coordinated enough, your tracer isn't the one to do this. It's your uh, Moira, which because Moira can just hold right click, and whenever it shows up, just that one little tick of right click can cause that cooldown. Um, but tracer is kind of a, a backup option to to help prevent Sombra from getting too much value. And with this swap from uh, Hadi going on to the Reinhardt instead of the Winston, is Shaq's looking to like pulse and swap uh, McCree, or is he happy with tracer even after pulse? Yeah, I think tracer is still good here. I um, even though they have a Brig, uh, tracer against um, you know mm -hmm. in a in a dive scenario is always good. Tracer's good in almost any scenario, um, so. I think he probably stays. So with uh, with Mulfig, you know, like marking uh, the Sombra as much as possible, unless Shax is uh, is playing that game. Who is who does the London Spitfire have to uh, match Kevster, or how do they deal with him? Yeah, okay, uh, Kevster basically has to be um, Mulfig and Blase together. Um, if Blase is not setting up for a hack player farming EMP, then he can uh, look to spam him out, just try to prevent as much as possible. But Mulfig is is your your big one because Diva's really good for anti air because of the booster cooldown. It's how much burst you can put out in short windows, um, and so Mulfig is probably going to be uh, tr just trying to deny space from Kevster. Um, th you know, since Echo can't stay uh, airborne as easily as Farah can, it's a little bit easier. Um, but it's primarily Mulfig trying to mark Kevster. Is kind of far back and make London push into them and do something right. So Glad's is setting up uh, forward on the high ground. Look at space positioning. Uh, Since he's Azari and not Diva, they're looking to go early. Uh, so he's they're right there. Um, Even with Burdering dropping, uh, Spitfire is not playing very fast at all. Yeah, Burdering has enough time to get back here. So this, so they're gonna let's see. Yeah, so they that's are pretty worried about Sombra here, based on their positioning so that, and how you know how much the, yeah. the directions they're spamming for Sombra. But they're still playing close. So if if they try to come out top side, if London does, then uh, Glad's is set up. That is huge, actually. Um, if you see the enemy Sombra spamming and you're still cloaked, if you can get that hack off, Sombra's dead.
Oh yeah. So, really good. Probably unfortunate ping scenario. Uh, it's definitely hard to react when you're uh, not on lives or um, you know yeah, land servers, but still doable. Intro. Oh, Kev. Yeah, Kev. I was gonna say that Kevstar was gonna drop unless he duplicated, but. Mm. I'm sure that was needed. All right, five volts against four volts. Yep. The EMPs. That's gonna be huge. We probably see um, Moth try to rally the EMP. The uh, the EMP. And Kellex has to dodge. With with Brig, the the, the Sombra saw each other in in stealth. You see bottom right corner, right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they ran over each other. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so that's good. It causes Bozzy to have to recall. And also, they get to see the direction that he recalled too, so they know where he's mm -hmm. coming from. That gives them at least kind of ten seconds. Uh, yep. And so now London has to just sit in there and wait for Bozzy to get set back up. I know, so sad, isn't it? I mean, you don't really want to have your. So they're gonna go. Interesting. Oh, they're inside. Yeah, they. Their Ryan is separated though, which is. I think that has to be like a miscommunication or something. Yeah. So because the Ryan, the Ryan pushes out while everyone else is still in there. Yeah, and then he goes inside and like. Because I think that Muse drops down expecting to find a backline, right? And then he's like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. like, "What?" And Mo Moth rallied as soon. Like, this makes me think that they're expecting an EMP on the bottom. They. Like, it could have been like, um, you know, they try to bait them to drop down, and then the EMP is probably why Moth rallies so they can go aggressive off of it. But there's only 30 seconds left now, um, so um, just an EMP makes it hard yeah, to Yeah, and even if birdring out tempos the EMP, then Blase just gets no value out of it at all. Mm -hmm. So they're in the driver. Glad is in the driver's seat right now, for sure. I think. A lot of it is Moth's ability to track ultimates and the, and the shot calling. I mean, champion right, 15 seconds. Calling, so Gladiator's in a great spot to okay, really, really glad, really grab. I like the tempo play here. Yep, that's what they needed to do. A lot of ults. Ooh, Moth's in trouble. Yep, Kellex wins that duel. Yeah, EMP on the shatter. So how did that go so wrong for LA? Yeah, so right, they do the, the tempo grab, which is really good. So it's like, there's the tempo cute. grab. I uh, it looks like it was. It looks like this grab was meant actually for Shax, but Shax was inside. Uh, yeah, maybe because Shax is already up here fighting, or there's nobody else there. But I think that I'm not sure if that was or it's a way to just like kind of prevent them from flanking. But mm -hmm. either way, this comes out and then Birdring EMPs this. There's the EMP. Or sorry, right Blase had this Blase. EMP. So it was so Bird Ring dies without being able to EMP. Yeah, so, so he drops, right yeah, right there. Because I think that he decloaked for it, but got EMP'd first. So they got the grab, mm -hmm. and then Bird Ring, I think. Yeah, so Blase just hit the EMP first. There's the the, the Shatter, hits two on the left side. Looks like Space and Shoe yep. go down. That's uh, key. Yeah. And did Moth get hacked there afterwards? He get afterwards? Because he had his shield up after... When the shatter was going off right here, yeah, and he didn't then get he... hacked. Okay, looks like either way, just a shatter, burst. yeah, yeah, shatter cleans up. So yeah, so Bird Ring uh, died to the EMP because he was trying to go for it, and Blossies just landed first. Uh, mm -hmm. And then yep. Hammer caused Shu to drop, and Moth was low enough health that Kevster won that duel with Sound Barrier on him. Yep. They're trying. Oh nope, there he they goes. Get, they get the cap. Yeah. Thoughts on Kev? Question from Kazar, please. Thoughts on Kevster? Uh, and the guy's insane. I think he's uh, one of the best players. Uh, one, of the, one of the best DPS players right now, for sure. <laughs> I saw him a lot in, in scrims when he was on NV. Uh, the guy's really good. This tournament took place on February 28th, so uh, just under two weeks ago. All right, so London goes to May, uh, which is interesting. Uh, probably just something they've been playing a lot of. Kind of defensive wall, making sure the dive can't follow through. Right out 1 1. Counter push with the Moira ult. Now it's their turn, they're pushing in. 
focus down space, that's the exact time. They, okay, so Catcher's gonna duplicate. That's five ults from Gladiators? I think they're gonna lose as well. Yeah, that was, it was a really good peel back, uh, and then hit the wall. Yeah. To be able to, to soak that dive and then re engage with theirs. Their Mirror ult was really good. Next yeah, Gladiators used 5 ult for that fold. 5 to 2 and still one. Mm -hmm. There's the stick. This is going to be yep. enough. Oh, good. and another this huge is, hammer. This kind of tempo is what I love to see. Eat, like, Muse has to touch cart at this point rather than deal with the fight. But London is playing so far forward. They're in their spawn uh, <laughs> while they have one person on, one person on cart. That's the kind of tempo you love to see. Well, Birdwing is nearing EMP, and they have to be able to stall enough to get there. They're gonna have so you know, they have to live long enough to get an EMP off well. in order so to win this. Alive, Space Blizzard is trying to get out of that Blizzard yeah, so he's, badly. He's <laughs> oh no! All right. Yeah. So that they, they that really kind of turned tempo, that around. They turned that around. Yeah. Yeah. If if London were to play like those last two fights, um, you know, the whole map, then this would have looked a lot different. But. It looks like in in certain certain parts of the map, they aren't all on the same page as what they want to do, um, which is kind of ex this is expected. These are the kind of things you expect to see preseason teams figuring out you know their play style and, and playing in an, in any kind of official match um, is always there's so much that you learn about your team, especially your first one, um, in how they interact, how that how things change people under pressure. Um, and so uh, the way that they played right there tells me that, you know, with time, London could be, you know, a, a, a pretty solid contender here. All right, so they're going to play the Ryan Diva May McCree, um, which is also, um, also kind of considered, uh, it's one of the other kind of catch-all comps, which is decent against a lot of things, um, because you... The only thing it really loses to, like it really loses to, is um, you know just a, a more hard rush comp. Yeah. Um, and what against, what is the hardest rush comp that's viable right now in the meta? Um, like the the purest one is if you were to have like uh, Ryan Zarya, um, May Reaper, or is May Reaper, May Reaper probably? Uh, I'm not I'm not sure how how good Reaper is right this second. Um, but it would be May Sim or May Reaper or something like that, where it's you know very close range focus. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like Glads is going to roll out with their um, double bubble comp, which can definitely can win. Um, it's not like it is completely countered, um, but it is a little bit tougher um, depending on how much value Shax can get. Shax and Ripa can get pre-fight. And so Gladiator's main win condition is taking out Repo. Is that going to be their main focus? Yeah. Um, so they well, they want to get as much spam as possible, get uh, space and shoe in a position where they can get value but kite back. Because if they're in a position where they can't move at all when uh, Hottie and Blase push forward, then they're done for. Um, so they have to be able to get in a spot and then surround them afterwards where uh, space and shoe are kind of your center point. Bird ring, calf circa on opposite sides, and Muse can be pretty much anywhere. Um, and then when London pushes in, um, space kites back, and then they collapse on from the other sides. Um, so that's like the ideal scenario um, for uh, Glads. But you know, with this comp, uh, when you have an echo, you can always get some kind of pick or separation or something. That's always possible. Just a scout. Here's gonna be the scout coming out. Is there anything that Bird Ring's going to scout here that's going to cause them to swap off their composition? Or is he just going to scout and be in position? Um, that, that is kind of purely uh, team philosophy on how, how they feel in the matchup. Like here, it looks like they are confident that like they can play this matchup um, because they're not immediately swapping. If they weren't, then they would have swapped, you know, the instant they saw something. But it just it's just kind of team team comfortability. So, okay, I don't know what caused Drippa to have to use his lamp there. That's a really big deal. Yes. Uh, which having lamp is on such a long cooldown that not having it, it, it it's cooldown lasts longer than any of the mobility cooldowns Glass is going to have. Sometimes twice so, over. Yeah. So that means Glass has a huge turn now, kind of turn based. Even if, 
even if they didn't London didn't get anything off of that, you're they're basically just gifting, you know, Glad's a turn here, which is pretty crazy. Uh, a question from chat. Uh, Math thinks asks: Somber priorities often change according to enemy ult economy and other information available. What's the most important info you could relay to your Sombra? How often is getting EMP online Sombra's main priority? Yeah. So generally, um, in the vast majority of comp styles, getting EMP online is is your high is is the highest priority. So that's usually why um, you'll see some of the, one of the best uh, Sombras in the league is Doha and he farms tanks so much. Um, you can see how fast he generates EMP. Um, the only time where, uh, generating EMP isn't necessarily your highest priority, um, is if you're going for, um, fast tempo Sombra play, which is not ideal. I um, mean, that's going to be, if you're playing that, you know, Sombra tracer, Lucio Moira, where you have the option of farming EMP or looking for hacks and pushing off of it. Um, there, there is a world where uh, you could argue that like uh, McCree Sombra, that that kind of comp style, like if like London Spitfire's comp, but Sombra instead of May, is where you could go for hacks um, and play off it because you can hack Diva or hack Ryan and then look for fast tempo play. Um, but generally, in the vast majority of circumstances, farming EMP uh, is the highest priority. But you you just have to make sure that you're not going to get your recall used whenever your team's ready to engage. So even if you don't have EMP, um, you know, you still have to be ready to get value um, off of an engagement, but you know, your priority should be from an EMP in almost every scenario. And we'll take one more question from the chat before keeping playing. Uh, Ice King says, isn't it true though, that using a lamp early in a fight, especially ones where you know, there are no ults, a good strategy. So you get an extra use of it. Obviously, it should still be used to save low teammates, but isn't it okay to try and get a free use in early? If you think that you can uh, have it up for the next next fight, then yeah, use it. Um, but in this scenario, uh, they didn't get any value. And, and keep in mind, we didn't see what exactly happened here. You know, the camera yes. wasn't like, like super crazy. So it, it looks like, you know... So... Yeah, it, Ripa got slept. So, like, this is a situation where, you know, a fast tempo lamp isn't going to get you any value. If you think think that you can, if you have enough time, like, the lamp's right here. I don't even know why the lamp's here. <laughs> right? Like, I just saw this. Can you can you play it, like, two seconds? Stickies. As McCree. Wait. Oh, he was just he was throwing it. it was oh, just going, we just it was, play, oh, it was going oh, through the model. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> That's that funny. And then you end up using um, cooldowns to try yeah, to if, way back to your health. Like it's definitely better to use it than die. Like, don't get me wrong, but it, having to use yeah. it without getting value off of it is like the, you know, the main point I was trying to make here is that uh, a lot of this, especially going back to even how they played on Oasis, a lot of this is more turn based. Uh, how London Spitfire had to use a set of cooldowns in like a turn in order to take the high ground. And then there was going to be like this posturing phase where they were waiting for their cooldowns to come back up to dive again. So in that, using this uh, lamp this early means that like they can make a turn that the enemy doesn't have like a counter play to. Uh, so they are vulnerable for a pretty long time just because it takes that 20-something seconds uh, to get the lamp back. Yeah, exactly. So if Glads can find a fast tempo fight, then they should have advantage. Wow, he just got shredded. So he did he engage without bubble? Is that what happened? No, he landed with it. No, uh, Zarya bubble. Without Zarya bubble. Oh, it was there. Oh, there it is. It was at the start. Yeah, it's still on when he jumped. So he went with yeah. it. Shax was down to like what? He went down to almost nothing. Yeah. Let's do this. They were able to to soak that really well. Is he uh he flashed and, and then he flashes after the bubble's gone. And then There you go. That was good. Shaq's not dying here, it's pretty crazy actually. Yeah. Well, Birding and Kester weren't even positioned to tickle, and then that, yeah. like, Hottie is there as well, just so. Yeah, um, One thing you can do as a Ryan um, is when the Winston dives, 
as long as you you kind of have to make a choice to either back up together with your team or separate the enemy. So if you walk forward, shield everything off, and you guys focus the monkey down, that looks like that. You know, it's, it's kind of what happened there. So even though Frippa had to use his lamp early, like you know, that kind of miscommunication on that dive from Glad's kind of uh, secured that turn. There's the window. He's through it. Oh, he got, I, he got the primal off though. Oh, he <laughs> threw the primal <laughs> and the nano. They still killed him. Yeah. Holy yeah. moly! They're gonna get the res though. Yeah, they get the res. Duplicate doesn't really get much. Keeps him alive though. And they're pushing back out. So one of the one of the interesting things about this point. Okay, good EMP. Clean it up. They should cap off this, right? Yeah. Um, against dive comps is Ryan. Playing in this room is is good for soaking the dives and then pushing back out. That's why um, this was real. This kind of style was really really popular in Goats meta against teams that were running triple DPS on attack. So in in that meta in the Goats meta, you know you basically had to open Goats on defense regardless. Um, and then the attackers had the option of being able to play like the triple DPS stuff, like the high DPS comps. Uh, to counter it and so when you're playing any kind of rush comp any kind of rhine comp using this room as a uh, kite back get healthy push back out is super important one of the things that that marks a an indecisive team or that is really tough for an indecisive team is if once they kite back into this room how does that re-engage look that next step because is one of the most important things on this map as a rhine comp is how you handle the push out so this is the right play uh, to push back out and try to um, take back pressure on the point as quickly as possible. But Kellex, the only like Kellex has to dodge his EMP and get a beat off super fast. Um, that, that that's kind of the catch twenty two of this kind of comp style with Glads is once they push London into the room, now London uh, London has to touch the point and that's prime EMP time. So. So yeah. Right here, then EP comes out. The beat, like, you know, is already too late. So this this was a, a solid uh, attack option for Glads there. Um, after that initial series of events. Yeah, that Kevster was there. And that's one of the things about Echo is she can come from anywhere. Like, literally anywhere. Unless they introduce a hero. They swapped to Sombra. We probably see a Moira swap. Yep, there it is. And then Hottie's going to keep Shatter. He probably swaps the monkey after. <laughs> he could he could keep Ryan, though. Um, this is a map where you can, for sure. So Blaze is here is going to be farming Amy or looking for a hack with Shax? So... He gets out, though. One of the key... Oh, so, uh, go back. There's a tad here. Like, right... Okay, so... You let me know when to pause. Normally, yeah, right it's just, here, pause. So this kind of situation, I was about to, you know, uh, flame Bob Blase for trying to uh, fight Shu here, um, but it's okay because London goes for the super fast rotate with Ryan, and they go all the way around coast, which is something you don't really see on this map. They're trying to stall the cart before it gets the arches. I mean, so even though Blase gets slept here. Um, because their team is there, it's fine. This is one of those scenarios where if your team's trying to play fast, then then you know you don't have to you know do the whole farm EMP thing. You can look for something. So this is it's really funny that this actually is like a, a really good example of you know the time where you know, any other against. situation uh, happens. She sleeps it, and they're yeah they come up through coast, and then they go to save him. <laughs> yeah, and she's got to run away. But Sha Shax gets hacked on the back end there. Yeah, it's really bad. But they are able to get Shu, which is more important. And space grabs. Yeah, that grab is is pretty crucial there. Got, and they get the res off. Had he so. got hacked. Yeah. So this this is bad because even though they stalled cart time, which is generally what the objective of this is. Well, they got cart really far actually on that rotation. Yeah. But you want to use your shatter to be able to swap off. Uh, so him not being able to shatter off of that. I think he uh, wanted to. He just got a hacked right as he was looking for it. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see with the setup. I don't like that. Muse isn't already pre-set up. I don't know why he's sitting on cart here. But and where would he play in order to be set up? And just hiding anywhere, any anywhere that's within distance of um, your jump. 
So because he has primal, you can use your jump to engage. Um, and like they EMP off it anyway. So I would have liked to. It didn't, it didn't end up mattering um, for that, but I would have liked to see him set up earlier. So they use EMP, Valk, Duplicate to try to finish this off, which I actually am, am okay with overulting at the end of second point here. Because if you don't close it out, then this happens. <laughs> so they don't, they actually don't close it out. So a, a lot of times you'll see teams use like almost everything to cap the end of second here um, because it's such a long travel distance to get to the cart if you don't cap it. And the defenders have a really short distance to cart. So this has kind of just devolved into chaos and now glad that's a reset. So the fact that they didn't... Uh, uh, clean it up after they yeah, use all three on the initial you know, push um, is is bad. This probably means um, you know at least a minute and a half to two minutes off the clock. If if I had to guess, that's what usually happens in this kind of scenario. Especially like because they're gonna have to you know, build up the majority of their ults in order to crack this yeah. nut. Mm -hmm. And if if anyone gets picked, you know, early, it's a huge time sink. So they're so one is going to play under, and they're ba they're basically playing this like new age goats. So that that stick is huge. What? What did they catch it on camera? Right there, right there. That's huge. So that's going to stall so much time. Because they were already out, and now they have to back off. That's big. That's big Shaq's play. Big Shaq's energy. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, look at look how long this cleanup is is taken for them. So when this happens, as Glad's, you have to like make a decision: do you engage anyway and give the enemy ult charge and try to either win the fight crazily or get ults out, or do you back off? Like you have to make that decision. It's such a, it's such a tough time. To start stabilizing in their own ults. They're going to have five ultimates up during this next fight. Alright, so they're getting 60 seconds. They've got four of their ults back. Almost at five. Okay, going to so try and Nana slam was... him after that bubble Duplicate. Goes. Kev's her duplicate Sombra. That's huge. Sombra duplicate is big. So even though they get uh, Bird Ring down, they're able to get EMP off. That's going to force him off high ground. Moth just barely staying alive there. Moth is such good mercy movement. He's absolutely insane. They're going to be able to touch again, though, aren't they? Jax is there to touch. Yep, Jax is yeah, there to touch. Right. And now that mute at uh, Hottie's there. Kevster's Shatter dead. hits Kevster. Yep. That's. Ooh. EMP. The, sh the sleeps that Chu has been hitting this entire series. Yeah. This they still have Sombra up though. I think that Hattie's gonna survive this. Oh, he's in the bubble. Yeah, uh, uh, there you go. So yeah, I mean they they had to cap it in overtime, you know. Yeah, like that. You were so right because when you said it took could stick. take a. Between a minute and a half and two, it was two minutes and three seconds. So, yeah, all right. I'm so excited for how Shu and Moth do in the long term in this season. For sure, they're gonna be one of my favorite backlines to watch. All right, so uh, let's see that what kind of setup that God uses to pause it real fast. I want to talk about this point now because. One of the things about second point on this map is a lot of teams like to swap in back into a dive style for second point. But on third point, the Rhine is so good because there's uh, short distances, there's cubbies you can use, and it's really hard to set up a dive. So Muse's positioning, he's never going to have like a super good uh, setup for himself. And the kite backs, um, when you don't have a Lucio, are pretty they're pretty linear so like when space goes forward he basically just has to go back and one of one to two directions is the only you know way he'll be able to go there's not like a bunch of options for him to kite back to so when the enemy team has a lucio they're going to be able to catch him so this becomes really tough for an attacking dive comp when the enemy team's playing a rhyme 
um, the uh, rush comp style because the rush comp just fits better in more linear styles where you can get value from the Lucio and the Rhine like pushing together fast. Um, so uh, spaces positioning becomes absolutely massive um, against these kind of comp styles when they're going to be rushing into cubbies and then uh, rushing out of cubbies. So turn base overwatch going up right here. Well, one finish with no time left. Oh, oh. oh. almost gets almost got him. Oh, there he goes. He oh, there he goes. Yeah. Shaq's with the cleanup. And then, wait. Kevster fell? <laughs> I guess he got booped off. All right. Yeah, I think that he was over with Moth and got separated. Yeah. So this is going to be tough. This, I, this is going to be really tough for Glads because EMP coming up for London... Blase can can set up in a, in a lot of positions here, and Glads don't have many options without a Rhine. Um, Early, so they, I mean, like they can try and tempo grav again, uh, like yeah. pre Valks to try and keep it alive through through it. Kevster can try and maybe go for like the, I don't know, they would were you, like Gladiators already has their zombies. Who's Kevster's duplicate target here? I guess is the big question. Yeah, I mean, if I had to guess, you duplicate Sombra. Um, Sombra or Diva. It just kind of depends on where the fight's at uh, when he decides to duplicate. If it's fast tempo, God, it's this is such a tough decision it's, it's, for it's him to have it's to It's really make. tough. Especially because with Shaq's landing a, a pulse. You know, even that. Yeah. Like Moth could potentially go for the res, assuming that it's not going to get hacked or EMP'd, but yeah. So well, let's see. I'm going to do this one slow. Playback speed <laughs> half. All right. Shaq's got the pulse bomb. Lurking, hunting. He's hunting. He's hiding. This is really dangerous for him to do when the enemy team has a Sombra. Oh, but he finds the... That's a big deal, actually. Birdring not being able to recall here. Yep. So we actually get... And then now he's going to pressure him. Look at that. Yeah. Shax is now on him. Yep. So Moth has preemptively Valkled... Val Val Valkled... Valkyried here. Uh... You know, probably preemptive for that EMP. And, but Shu, so what, like, is Shaq's going to try and pulse this? Because Shu, like, is, should have line of sight to try and go for a sleep on Shaq's, and Birdry can still fight. So unless Shax goes for this pulse bomb here, he needs to just leave, right? Well, I think Blase is about to EMP. So because Birdring doesn't have a translocator out right now, he probably calls there's no translocator, and so they're going to look for a fast EMP. Um, if they're if they've been tracking it, they know that Birdring has to build it mid fight, um, because especially if Birdring is visible and spamming, it means that he's building his EMP. If he was invisible in the situation, then he already has EMP in his setup. So they know that they have like this tiny window uh, for him to you know to to make a play before he EMPs. So getting translocator and he's pressuring the Sombra to where even if Sombra does have EMP right now. He, if he uses it right this second, it's a bad EMP. And so this is like a really good moment for Blase to EMP and then push because now Sombra's not going to get as much value. Okay. So I imagine here soon we're, we're going to see an EMP come out from Blase. But Space does get the grab before because well, the way it looked like, it looked like Blase was just starting to decloak, but it wasn't. He was just jumping. And now mm -hmm. Space has actually yeeted the grab out. Yeah, so we're, the grab is, uh, I saw it, uh, it traveled through here. I'm pretty sure it's landing right here. Right here, okay. I think so. So it's on, on Hottie. Uh, oh, it landed just behind yeah. him. So Blase is now decloaked here. Where did Shax go? Shax just uh, translocated, right? So yeah, he's he, going to be out of the yeah, fight yeah. for like five seconds. Yeah, recall. Mm -hmm. okay, so here comes so EMP. Yeah, there, there's that EMP. And it only hits Muse? Yeah. It only hits so that, Muse. That's a big graph play. Yeah, and where is Muse right now? Oh, and there's Muse. the stick onto... So, uh, Shaq's after... Wait, Shax did mm -hmm. not recall? I thought Shax recalled. He, he looks like he blinked uh, forward. Let's look at the... Yeah. He's... Oh, yeah, I, I misread that. Yep, so... There, there's the stick play, yep. yeah. He sees Shu trying to hide from the EMP, and then... And Kevster does get the duplicate onto the Sombra, and Birdring goes for the EMP. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he lands oh, so... four, but Reaper didn't get hit. Yeah. Uh, but they don't really have damage follow-up for the CMP. No. 
So even though it's like a, a you know like a five man EMP or four man EMP, it's not that great. That the grab from space is pretty huge, but you're kind of in a catch twenty two here. Yeah, Moth's trying to get this res onto space. I think gets it, and then a second EMP is going to hit Reaper and and Morphig. Mm. Shatter misses everyone, I believe. <laughs> Space That's blocked that with personal, yeah. and Kevster hadn't touched ground yet. He, yeah, Moff getting the res on space is pretty big. Now they're going to have respawns coming in, so... And Kevster still has the ability to go back into Echo, and mm -hmm. Muse just popped Primal. So Mulfig's launching his bomb, but is that going to do anything? Because Shu's going to be walking back. It's so... hacked. Oh, oh, I thought he... Yeah, he, it looks like he got hacked before he could launch it. Okay, so I think the Ellie, like... Ellie is still in this. Space has dropped, and there's no res to go. And as soon as this ultimate from Muse is done, they're out of ult. Like, everybody's out of ultimates, except for Kellex. So, Kellex mm -hmm. here could be the last guy, but he's being pressured hard by Birdring. Birdring's going to have to translocate yeah. out because of Shaq's pressure. Even even if Glads wins this fight, they still have to win one more. So, getting as many ults out as possible um, is, you know, still a good scenario from London. Mm -hmm. Kevster and Muse are going to have to hide and then touch... Moth drops there to Reaper. I think with Moth dropping, that's a GG. Mm -hmm. They don't have any other ults to do to be able to flip it. And she was getting rocked by Shax right now, yeah. Reaper might drop here, maybe. Oh, melee health, literally mm -hmm. one bar. And that'll be tick unless anybody can touch. I don't think they can unless Birdring goes aggro, but that'll just be sacrificial. Yeah. The the key there is that the beginning from Shax, I think, is so crucial. Getting that it translocator. Why, yeah. Yeah, it shows why he's he has such a good game sense to find that translocator and then pressure the Sombra. And then when the EMP goes off, he gets the pulse execute on Anna. Like that's huge. <laughs> Big setup and like if if he has if he doesn't kill Shu there with that pulse and that grab from space probably saves them. It was close, saves, yeah. 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 No, for sure. If that pulse bomb didn't kill Shax, or it didn't kill Shu, rather, it was from Shax. Then yeah, yeah, I think that that goes, and then we see a, a fight right at the end of third there. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't think we have enough time for another one. But th did this go the full distance, the full five maps? It did. You just want to jump to map five? Yeah. Let's jump to map five here. Lijong. So based on what we saw on Control Center, our city, not, I'm sorry, not Control Center, uh, University for, uh, on Oasis. There was the May McCree, there was the Sim, there, there was the Doom McCree, the Sim May comp. Um, and so we'll probably see that on Control Center and maybe Night Market. Um, I don't Garden. It's probably more of the double I bubble. I would imagine Glads would play like their double bubble on Garden. And then, um, yeah, okay, well, we're on Night Market first, so. I am going to drag a... Uh, oh, thanks, game. Did you have a question? Let's see if Anx game wants to hop in. There he is. All right, Anx game, what you got for a question? Hey, so uh, it's about the current meta. How much changes as he go down the ranks? Say, like, a Diamond team is... Um, dive as strong as it is theoretically like in the overwatch league or is forcing rush just better because it's easier to play um i would say rush is probably better because it's easier um the coordination becomes a lot simpler because everyone can follow one person um whereas with dive everyone has to know their own setups and your communication is purely based off of it's primarily based off of audio cues um, and so being able to call i'm in position we're ready to go um, and someone calling other musician whereas with rush you're all one unit you can all follow the rhyme and everyone's seeing the same thing and it's easier to follow up on um, so in in lower ranks where, where the teams aren't quite as coordinated rush probably is a better play and would that hold up to like gibraltar there's definitely ways you can do it um if you like uh, you have to think about where you're going to be setting up for each fight. So you can't just think about it as like first point we hold here and here. You have to break it down to like 
what cubbies can you hold in and rush out of against what comps in what situations do you have to hold inside there's when you have to push out you have to find um, a lot of those scenarios and one of the ways that you can do um is if you go back to overwatch league season two um, and look at all the spots that people played rush comps on every single map when it was played on every single map you can kind of see a lot of those if you're unfamiliar um spots where people are hiding like hiding and holding um, gotcha so I, I'd recommend looking, you know, that's kind of a cheat sheet for spots. Um, but and you said uh, season two? Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Although it's not like the gladiators don't have a great tracer player. So we'll see. It's all very. So um, are we, is Glad's going to stick with this? Here <laughs> the uh, jaws. Are they? I, they could stick with junk. Okay. This is probably what they're doing. All right. So. Pause it real fast. Teams on this map aren't going to be Symmetra TPing out of spawn um, because you can cover so much more distance going from main to window. That's where both teams are going to be TPing. So pause it as soon as you see the TPs come out. Uh, keep going a little bit. Wait, wait till they like drop out of the TP. Right here. Okay. What a, what a great view. Good job, observers. They didn't see this one coming. We all seeing a um, so right here, <laughs> let's talk about the differences in comp here. <sighs> okay. Because, wow, these are terrible angles already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good luck here. But I, I I can kind of tell you how this this plays out. So you put a you know I've put a ton of time into this one. Chat. I want you to lean back, close your eyes, and uh, Arrow will paint a picture with his words. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so the very the first second and a half is by f- like of this fight like from when teams hit their interact key and go through the teleporter the first second and a half is by far the most important part of this whole map right here this is the most important two seconds that you're going to see um so in this comp one of the there's two key differences number one spaces on orissa instead of diva and bird rings on Junkrat instead of may so that means um Glads is going all in for that two second burst. You get a junk rat pipe, a left click into a mine, someone dies. Uh, a support probably dies if um, he if it doesn't get eaten by Diva. Okay. So the halt from Arissa means that he can pull people together into junk rat nades. Um, and then uh, you have another shield you can play around and you have Arissa Fortify. But Molfig has the matrix. So whatever. Uh, Mul- Mulfay has to matrix a Junkrat in order for this to be successful. He has to, he, but it's going to be really hard. It's not just Junkrat he has to watch out for. It's the he has halt to watch as well. For the, the halt, yeah, that's huge. Junkrat and the fire strike. Um, so all three of those things are huge burst things, and they're in melee range, right? They're going to be in melee range from going to the window. Like anybody could hit melee and hit, you know, like six people off the teleporter. Um, now on top of this. Symmetra value is huge because you have to try to get as much value. You have to protect your Symmetra as much as possible while still getting value yourself. And so the Symmetra players have a choice to make when they're falling down here. Number one, do you shoot the Rhine to make him have to shield and then recharge your mana? Or your mana, I say mana, your your, um, ammo. Goodness. What you've been playing Uh, recently. I've been playing WoW too much. (laughs) Uh, And then, uh, or if you... If the person's aim is just insane and you have crazy tracking, you can uh, focus down a squishy. Um, now, Blase having a wall kind of throws a wrench in things because you know you have the wall isn't going to be as valuable as other scenarios because you're not just going to be able to block off a choke and split the team. It has to be used just to prevent damage and kind of block off one person for like a second. So this is like some some crazy differences. I personally like Junkrat first here to be honest because the initial burst damage of being able to to left click mine right away um be able to catch someone off guard is it's pretty nuts um and you know may gets a little bit better um after the first initial wave because then you have control of the chokes the other team's probably not going to be using symmetra on the windows anymore after this like there there's different options so initial fight these first two seconds most important that's what we're, we want to see right here Doomfist also can like be a same scenario as Junkrat because it's unblockable damage. Um, and so 
that that is an alternate i saw i just kind of saw it in chat and I, uh, that's that's a good point here. so there you go right away boom symmetra's dead uh that's a really big deal and now kefster has free reign just to beam have a turret yeah look at this yeah, especially against those double shields, this Metro just being able to regenerate ammo while shooting the shields and never having to reload. So strong. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of horrifying. You see him put up the turret there too. <laughs> the, the respawners fought again, and Bird Ring go <laughs> kills him. <laughs> Wolfic tries to get fa back fast on the ball, which yeah. ultimately he just resets his And ball now they got to try and retake this. So are they going to like full swap to try and retake? Go something like Echo if, or Farah? If, or... if you're sticking on May, they probably are are just going to keep the whole comp if they want to keep the mail short. So they're still going to try and rush onto this uh, point. They're using Moth yeah. in the window trying to get some scouting. Oh, they are going to try and TP Aren't right back on the point again. They're going to, they're baiting it though. They bait it and then they go, go through the front, which is not bad. Um, they do it and they run past the window. So that's a, that's a big deal. But the supports are blocked off by Simwall. Uh, Kevster gets pinned. Uh, against Blase's uh, cryo free. Yeah. So, so, yeah, they, so they did win that. All right. Yeah. So the key thing here is the bait gave them enough space that when they push forward, uh, Shoes window does nothing. Like you can see it go up right here, and they run right past it. Absolutely no value. Uh, and they get their own up as well. Yeah, and they they get their own window up, which has to get countered by Symmetra Wall. But now they can just uh, work off that shatter. Had he got so far pushed in, yeah, yeah, that was that was good. That was a good so, bait. Play. So what uh, what should have the gladiators done to prevent that? Um, well, first off, I think uh, they needed to not get baited by the TP. First of all, I mean that's that's definitely a hard choice. I think they handled it fairly well, but they got uh, London got so much space off the TP. Um, you know that's that's one of the disadvantages of being on Arissa is you don't have fast scouting like you do as Diva, mm -hmm. um, and so uh, you kind of have to make a guess on what they're going to do if they're going to take the bait or if they're going to use the TP. Um, I think they should have expected the bait though because yeah. dropping on them doesn't really make yeah. It, make so that, so that's why like I was a little bit taken back to see the teleporter because in my mind like actually using it makes no sense sort of thing. Is there any yeah. point in time where that's not a bait play? Um, if you have an ult to support it. Um, like if you if they had Blizzard right away, then they could do that because uh, Glass doesn't have a Diva. There's no way it gets eaten. Um, so you can literally take the TP, drop the Blizzard, and the whole point is covered in Blizzard. Um, but because they don't have that ult, you know, I, I wouldn't expect them to do it to actually take it any other you know way. But then the wall, the window from Shu not getting any value is uh, really tragic. That that is a very big deal. Uh, All right, that was pretty clean for him. Yep. So we'll see what Glad wants to do if they want to do TP. Um, they have Shatter, they have Beat. Both teams have Beat, so this will be interesting. So here, yep, they're not even going to put the TP up. So th this means that he has an option of being able to use like TP mid fight where you can put it in the back. And a lot of Sims will, will put it in the back to where you can take it, zap the supports, and then take it back out. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in danger, or they could use it for like a fast shatter engage. You have a, a bunch of options with TP mid fight and rush. Here it comes. Yeah, there's the TP. Look, I don't know where it's going. It, it I, I think it's going it's... behind point. Yeah, yeah I assume. Are they all taking it? It is directly behind point, but it's being fired on. Yeah, I think Kevster took it and then went back. Birding's going to tire. But yeah, th it was good. It was really good of uh, London that when they used the TP and then they heard the tire come out, they pushed aggressive off of it with Blizzard. That's good timing from them. Glad's took too long to make that play happen. But uh, it is, uh, you know, they get Blizzard out, which is huge. Uh, that, that's a really big deal. And so they're able to trade Blizzard for tire. Now Maze are pretty similar on ult charge. 20% isn't that big of a deal um, in, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, I mean, so now it's a battle of the walls. When you're shooting at turrets, or the you're windows, rather. shooting at the things you would rather be shooting windows at. Windows and walls. You have a lot of low fire rate heroes, it gets brutal. Nice yeah, they can push forward. They're not getting any value out of that window. Yeah. That's good. That's a, 
a prime example of how to counter it. One of the things about having Bongo here is Bongo is a window, but it, it's the, basically the same thing as the it's window. It's like an AOE window. Yeah. An AOE window instead of an angle window. Mm -hmm. So I like this. I like putting pressure here. One of the disadvantages, or one of the things about having Sim means that you can't hold the forward choke because the enemy can do the point TP. Um, so they, they can't hold really aggressive. Um, they basically have to take all their fights here. Okay. Pin into bomb. But, yeah, that was a good sim wall. Oh, and huge shatter, actually. Big shatter from Muse. May is going to drop as well. These fights are so chaotic. Yeah. It really is just brawl. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's really, it's like tactical, 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 and then the fight starts. <laughs> and it's everybody for themselves. <laughs> yeah. The the team that has the Arissa in this situation has generally more forward push pressure. The D.Va is more like side angle uh, type stuff. Yeah. You know, your high ground. So I'm surprised that he's sticking with D.Va, um, but it's probably just some, just, you know, they're more comfortable on it. Both walls down. I think that Blizzard got interrupted. He didn't come out, but I heard the voice line. Yeah, so. This is, it looks like it's going to be Gladiator's point. Yeah. Well, uh, Blizzard got cancelled. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the window and the, uh... <laughs> the window and super up? That's a lot of damage. Hey, Blaze getting two, though. I think it's too little too late. Yeah. Still! Still! Yeah. Still? Still? Um, so yeah, in in on this point with the way these brawls work out, I'm not so a fan of Diva, um, but you know it's probably just London. Probably just more comfortable Diva at this point in time. Um, and so it's going to be something similar here. A lot of teams like Junkrat more on this map um, rather than uh, like some teams will do Sim Junk, some teams will do Sim. It's a mixture of Sim May Junk, but we see a lot of Junkrat here because of the angles you can you can do uh, with with your left clicks why um, you can, uh, why do you think we didn't see any uh like farah or echo on that first point like we would normally see for retakes in other situations yeah so um on that map it takes a lot of time uh to kind of learn the different angles and stuff um where if you're going to play that comp uh as a, a team um in overwatch league you have to commit a lot of time to it and so um a lot of times if teams don't have a ton of time to prepare They'll generally play brawl on it because it's easier to pick up quickly um and you just get a little bit more uh you know it's a comp that you can play in a lot of places like that um whereas the setup times for echo farah the side angles you have to take um is actually pretty tough on that map because of the enclosure even though it's uh it has like a skybox it's still pretty enclosed and so with with symmetra in the mix um being able to have reach on basically anyone coming into the point um, it makes it pretty tough that teams generally prefer just to play brawl on the brawl and try to outmatch the brawl. Just kind of a, a meta that developed with Overwatch League teams. Uh, I would expect that to continue just because it's easier. Um, so here, Mulfing's going to play Sigma, which um, I still like Sigma a lot. It, like he, This was before the shield flicker change got... Yeah, up got to two and a half seconds. Yeah, so his, so his shield was still two and a half seconds here. But you still get a ton of value um, from the different angles and uh, just left-click damage in general here. And you still have Matrix for the for the very first part. Hero pick from space here to go to the Arissa and uh, just shows uh, Gladiators with Arissa here is going to be pushing harder than the other team, most likely. Yeah, that Sigma Ryan is going to prefer more of those, like, uh, more of the off angles, just like the D.Va. <laughs> Both matches go down to drunk rats, kind of expected. Yeah. But you notice how uh, London's taking point side now, rather than pushing through white and trying to capitalize on That's because they have Sigma. But Bertrand gets Reaper. Yeah, that's huge, actually. The value of Junkrat on this map. Wait, has anyone gotten kills other than the drunk rats right now? Yeah. <laughs> this guy is crazy, actually. Wow. Yeah, so this being able to get the window faster from being in a tighter space means they can push out with it and get point control. So and Ripa going down is huge. Oh, that was big. 
the shatter as soon as window goes up is uh, was really good. That's another way that a lot of teams like to you know, when when a window goes up if you can play fast off of it. If they're not expecting shatter, you can you know do your fast shatter there. That's pretty good. So let's look at the setups. How is London going to try to use their TP here? They only have Sigma ult, whereas Gladiators has uh, a few, couple ults four. coming up. Yeah, four. Yeah. So this is going to be uh, an interesting thing. London has to get a lot of value uh, from the Sigma ult, but it's probably just going to get matched by Moth's beat, and then you know, it, you know, they're going to have London's going to have to try to find an advantage somewhere else. So I imagine this poke phase is going to last a little longer than just a fast fight. Unless um, London just, just ints in so fast to trade ults. Uh, the Sigma. Uh, Sigma can't obviously eat the beam. The beam damage goes straight through it. So is there... Sigma's probably going to try and take white to at least match, uh, like, the Junkrat window, up there. And I assume the, the Ryan's going to go main, or...? Sigma's probably just going to mark white side. I don't think he'll push in. Yeah. But he's just going to keep pressure there. Okay, so he's going to get ult and try to get... Yeah, so he gets the beat out. Traded for beat. They're going to kite back. So that's not bad. Both DPS ults. So the fact that Bird Ring Tire... So Kevster used the wall at the same time and Bird Ring Tired. So this is a good situation for London, actually, because they just kite back. Even though they gave they gave up time, they got two more ults out of it. So now they have their own beat, uh, and they can use beat aggressive because, they're, uh, because the enemy team doesn't have Sigma. Yeah, so there's the beat push in off the window, they deny that window, push that in. That was really the... clean. Yeah, so that was good. These are the kind of things that uh, make me excited to see how London's going to grow. Because they, they're they they're already able to get these these kind of things um, initially. Uh, but the key is going to see how they do on comps that aren't Rhyme with Lucio, you know? Yeah, so... So, Chad, I see you saying three ults. So, uh, Arrow's saying that it was two more ults. The Moth ult was a trade yeah. for the Mulfig's ult. So, three in total, but two more. That's why it was such yes. a good trade for the London Spitfire. They will not be going through to the final stacks. Oh, it looks like we have a setup for some good old classic Rhine games. We've got Muse. All right, and so they're going white here. Shatters. Either could win While they're sitting up up top. For their respective team. And he's... Gladiators are one fight away from <laughs> going to the finals. Interesting angle. So, they're actually holding forward Oof. but the supercharger push in makes him have to kite back that was interesting observing that was really hard to follow uh, yep, yeah that was <laughs> so they had to kite back and they pushed back in with tire um and I was able to get more advantage because of the supercharger push. So that was good. Hey, they'll get the touch, though. Yeah. All in the back line, just fighting Symmetra, getting it back off. Getting close to another tire, which could just end things out for Bird Ring. What, uh, what ultimates do we have for this fight? Bird Ring just got his tire. That's the, well, Reaper's got the window. Oh, yeah, quite easily. Right. Hey, where is, wait, hold on. Can you go back, like, where Space gets that kill? So he sees Shaxx up there and just runs into him and beams him. Getting close to another tire, which could just end things out for Bird. Yeah, the pole just runs out of mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah, quite easily. Big, <laughs> big Arisa energy right there. Here comes. Okay, so London uses window, Bird Ring uses tire, so. All right, doesn't get anything from it. Use charge in the back line. Ooh, that's a big beat from Moth, too. Oh, Ooh, that's a big shatter, but I think it's... Oh, okay, he gets... That was close. Yeah, it sucks that they have to have this fight with Ball Tracer instead of, you know, a standard variation. But... I mean, overall, just on those maps, you know, like I said, I think Gladiators um, has a really high ceiling, like really high. Um, and London, you know, we, well, we, I want to see how they do on other comps, but, you know, they have a pretty solid foundation, so it'll be fun to see. Awesome. That was good. I mean, London, Like, I, I feel like from the matches that we watched, I, I I guess we watched all three of the ones that Gladiators won, right? Uh, or or no, Blizzard World it was did. Two one. Yeah. It was 2-1. It was 2-1, but 
Uh, at least on the cost, it seemed like Gladiators were pretty dominant in that. Uh, but scoreline would suggest that it was mm -hmm. a lot closer matchup than than, uh, than one would expect. But mm -hmm. where are you expecting these teams to kind of like line up in a in a like a power ranking sort of thing? Where do you think um, they fall? Yeah. So for uh, for the Western region, I mean, Gladiators has to be up at the top. I think with with some time, um, you know, cleaning up, uh, you know communication where you know just coordination with the team uh i think that glads has a ton of potential i'm i think that they're going to be a powerhouse team this season um london is like you know, like i said beginning i think they're a wild card they're um they could do well i i don't see them being you know top three or anything um but they can definitely do really well they already have a bunch of foundation pieces that look good um so you know, with this being the very first one, this is their first official as as a unit, uh, with uh, you know, with the new pickups that they have, because it, it's you know largely a British Hurricane roster with some tweaks. Um, so like they have some core stuff, but you, when you add new pieces, you always have to you know rebuild. So um, I'm excited to see where they go, and I think they're going to do better than most people would project them to. Um, but you know, I, I would say middle to middle high is you know, who who knows if if they have a lot of pieces that. Um, you know, like they have a bunch of pieces from the the Danish World Cup team, um, where they have a lot of history playing together, and then they've done well. I mean, they did well in the 2019 World Cup, you know, mm -hmm. where that that roster did well. Um, and so, you know, who knows? I think that they, you know, th there's potential there to be a dark horse. Awesome. Well, chat. I hope you enjoyed that. We'll be doing a lot more of these. Um when the Overwatch League actually starts up, because we're going to be doing co-streams of the Overwatch League games while they're live, yep. uh, as well as uh, an analysis or two, probably on the Mondays after the weekend, but uh, we'll have to see. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, I think that's all we got for you today.